Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our program, Watch and Pray. As usual, I want to welcome you to this session. I want to welcome you to this program. This program, we call it Watch and Pray. It is a program brought to you. It is a program coming from the Action Chapel, Sweden. Remember, this program is aired on this TV station every Saturday from 6 o'clock. Again, it is aired every Thursday from 3 p.m. This program is again repeated, brought to you right there where you are on Friday from 6 o'clock. And on Sunday, we have again this program coming to you right there. I want to say this program has been wonderful, just like it has done to me. I believe this program has touched many of you out there. And I know that you have a testimony. And I know that you have benefited. And I know that your spirit has been really touched by this program. I want to say that we want to continue from where we stopped last time. And we are going to continue our Bible study from John chapter 16 and verses 12. I want to introduce to you the man and woman of God who are going to bring this program live to you. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to say enjoy the show. Please prepare yourself. Prepare your soul so that the Holy Spirit can touch you through the man of God. Ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy that show. Thank you very much, um, Apostle Simon, uh, for the high and lifted up introduction given to us. We are on it and we thank God for mm. everything. Um, honey, what do you think? I think we are blessed yes. to have him in our congregation. Mm. Um, and we are mostly favored yeah. by the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Today we are going to continue, like he rightfully said, mm -hmm. with John 16, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And Apostle is going to start us off. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> thank you for all the comments we've been getting uh, from you, all great v viewers. Um, we really know God is doing something unique in your life. And we want to see you come to church and fellowship mm -hmm. with us. Because if through television you are being blessed, can you imagine the impartation and presence when you should be there, something else will happen. But we are going to start with John chapter 16 from verse 12, where that's where we stopped the last, last week. So we are going to continue. And the Bible says that John chapter 16 verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Now Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples about his departure. He's preparing them mentally that I'm about to leave the earth. And they were a little bit perplexed about how we've thought that the, the Messiah is supposed to stick around mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And now you done all these great works and our hopes are all built in you knowing that you are going to be there all the time. So uh, all of a sudden you start ministering about this departure and we are not so happy. And Jesus was telling them that there's so much that I have and I, I want to tell you, but knowing how sorrowful your mm. heart is right now, by just knowing that I'm about to leave the earth, I don't want to add more things to it that can make you become um, frustrated. Mm. So I will not say it now, but later on you will get to know when, honey, you continue. Exactly, with verse 13. Mm. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Mm. Now this verse, our Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the Holy Spirit, mm. and he's informing them that when the Holy Spirit comes, mm. the Holy Spirit is not going to speak of himself, mm -hmm but will guide them into all truth. Mm -hmm. That means the Holy Spirit will be speaking the words of God, Amen. will be speaking the words of Jesus. Yes. That is why in our daily life today, we need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit was speaking, mm -hmm. he still is speaking now. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is something that we need to strive for every day, that Holy Spirit show us, 
the things to come and guide us into everything so that whatever you tell us to do, we will follow it, we will mm. do it. Mm. And as Christians, that should be our motivation mm. to seek the Holy Spirit daily. Mm. It's very important that we know this, that Jesus now communicates through the Holy Spirit to you. So everything that like I'm saying right now, God the Father and then God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, knows that there's something that you need to hear. And Jesus Christ is telling the disciples that he's not going to speak of himself. Mm. The Holy Spirit doesn't have his own ministry. There's no ministry that should be called the Holy Spirit ministry. No, everything is based on the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ. So it's because of Jesus the Holy Spirit will come. So he's saying that the Spirit will not speak of himself. Mm. Of himself meaning that the Spirit doesn't have his own doctrine. He doesn't have his own mission. No. But all he does is to glorify Jesus Christ, which I'm going to take in the next verse. Right. Yes. 14 says that mm. he shall glorify me. You see, so the Holy Spirit's work is to glorify Jesus mm -hmm. because of what he did on the cross. And what at that time he has not died yet, but what he's about to do. So Jesus said that he shall, meaning that he's the future. Mm. So he, he shall glorify me, Jesus, for he shall receive of mine. Mm. So receive of mine means that anyone that is connected to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has no choice but to receive that person and, and, and shall show it unto him. So, and then it says that information that Jesus has that wants to give to you will come through the Spirit. The Spirit I, I, exactly. I want you to receive an information right now mm. through the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've been battling because I see somebody who is struggling. He said, Lord, I don't know your decision concerning this issue. Mm. Whether I should do it or I shouldn't do it. But I need you to right now to open your spirit up and the Spirit of the living God is going to minister right into your spirit that go ahead, do it or do not do it because you know the situation at stake. And the Spirit of God is in you. The Bible said that he will come and live inside of you, just as the, the Jesus said. Mm. So when the Spirit of truth, because he tells you the truth, he can lie. Mm. So, baby. Verse 15. Mm. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Mm. So what Jesus is saying is that the Spirit is speaking actually from the Father, mm -hmm. because everything the Father has within him, mm -hmm. Jesus has also. And therefore, Jesus is also speaking through the Holy Spirit through us. And he's going to show us every direction that we are supposed to take in life. Mm -hmm. And we shouldn't be bothered when the Holy Spirit talks to us. We should know that it is the Father in heaven that is actually talking to us, mm -hmm. and that we know that the instructions that we are getting can never be wrong. They are the instructions of truth. The instructions which will bring your breakthrough, mm. will bring your deliverance. Yes. Will just turn your life around. Mm. You see, sometimes we struggle with the instructions of the Spirit of God. You hear God saying, do this. But then you want to use logic thinking mm. to weigh the mind and the voice of God. That's where we fail. That is what the Bible calls you're trying to save yourself. Anyone that's trying to save his life will lose it. They say the same person will lose his life. Now, when God speaks that do this, forgive this person. Go ahead and forgive the person. Pray for the person. Do what is right. Even though it's very painful, you have no choice. If you really want to stay in the blessings of God, mm -hmm. if you really want God to continue to be your guide and your shield and your excellent and exceeding rewarder, you must just do what he asks you to do. Now, the moment God gives you an instruction, Satan will also give you an instruction. Mm -hmm. And the, the, what Satan will show you is something that is like opposite what God says. Because the enemy knows that the only thing that can create sin is when you hear the voice of God and you don't act on the voice of God. That is actually the birth of sin. The birth of sin, that is how sin came into the world. When God said that, Adam, do not eat of this tree, of this fruit, the fruit of this tree. And then Satan got that instruction and Satan turned the instruction around. So this is the thing that you need to know that Jesus is saying as uh, honey, you said that all things that the Father have are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Mm. So God shows Jesus 
things about your life. That is why it's very imperative that right now you cannot go away from Jesus Christ and say, I'm going straight to God. You have to go through Jesus. That's why you can't pray through any other belief or any other name. There's no other name but the name Jesus. Mm. So God the Father show it to Jesus and Jesus show it to the Holy Spirit mm. to show it to us. That is how the communication is being done. The verse 16, Jesus is just trying to alert the disciples that I'm not going to be always around to keep reminding you of the instructions and the commandments of God. So I will not be long with you, but what is going to happen is God will send a spirit which has come to dwell within you. And this spirit is going to prompt you about things to do. And you see, any, anyone that wants to succeed in life needs to follow the voice of the Spirit of God. You cannot even leave your home without asking, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, can we go now? It is something that we should be practicing. Sometimes we rush out of the house and we, we rush into problems. But I think we need to be, mm. be able to confront the Spirit of God and yes. ask for clearance, mm. that the road should be cleared, everything should be smooth, and you see life will be much, much better. Mm. Yes, still you will go through some trials, but you have an understanding mm. and joy going through them. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, mm. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. So here are the disciples confused. Because mm. Jesus is telling them that in a little while, they will not see him. Mm -hmm. And that he's going to the Father. And they're saying, if they don't see him, mm -hmm. how can that be? Because he's always with them. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that Jesus was actually talking about his crucifixion mm -hmm. and that he will be going back to God the Father. And they had their hopes. They had their hopes that Jesus would stay on earth and Jesus would be a king and they will sit at his right hand mm. and they will rule with him. Mm. They didn't understand that his whole purpose of coming on earth was actually to save our sins. And, that, and that, at that time, that is not what they want to hear. Mm. At this time, they want to see the physical greatness of who Jesus is. Jesus sitting in a chariot, Jesus with a lot of soldiers ruling the kingdoms, taking over the Pharisees. So they are a little disturbed and they are asking and like complaining to each other. But how can, how can he say that? Because he's going to the Father. What does that mean he is going to the Father? Is he going to die or is he, what way is he going to the Father? Why is he leaving us, abandoning us and saying that mm. he's going to the Father? Mm. So they are just questioning. And, and this is sometimes what we do when God gives us an instruction. I just mm. need to repeat that because when God gives you an instruction, you don't have time to be questioning God. No. Sometimes you say you want to understand why God wants me to do it. Why is it that God wants me to do that? You want to know why before you do it. And, and through that, you might end up losing your breakthrough. Mm. Verse 19, now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto him, unto them, do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me. So now, Jesus knew that the disciples were <laughs> desirous, that means they were designed to really put the puzzle together. How yeah. can you say that a little while will not see you? And then a little while we shall see you. Yeah. You, 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 you are confusing us. <laughs> that, that is what they were. So now they were looking at each other's face, but nobody there. Mm -mm. They, they, didn't, they were not able to ask Jesus, but they, they were, the desire was there. Mm. Because Jesus, the first time Jesus said that a little while I will be with you, and then I will go to the Father. Mm. They, they understood the final destination. Because mm -hmm. the final destination is I'm going to the Father. But now how do you switch and now you say that in a little while you see me again? Mm. So now they are confused. Is he going to form another army somewhere? Is he going to, you know, take a vacation and then come <laughs> back? They were confused. So they wanted to know why is he saying all these things in a little while mm. and he shall see me again. And the seeing me again is that Jesus is going away and he will come back. 
And I don't know whether your, your Christian walk with the Lord, are you prepared that the Lord can show up any moment from now? Because sometimes our relationship with the Lord has become, I'm serving God to get something. And I'm, just, I'm always going to serve God so that God can make my life easier. Heaven is not a priority anymore. But heaven is the ultimate. Heaven is what God wants us to reach out to. Exactly. It's not these material things that we are going to leave everything behind anyway. But God wants your heart to be ready for heaven. And I don't know whether material things or documents or marital issues have, have swapped that desire. And now mm. you are designed for something. And so I pray that you will come back and start seeking heaven. Mm. Amen. Amen. Verse, 19, verse 20, sorry. Mm. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So here is Jesus describing the process that the disciples will go through during his crucifixion, mm. that in the beginning they shall weep and lament because of, of the sorrow of seeing him on the cross. But the world shall rejoice. The world mm. meaning the Pharisees mm. and all the other Jews that wanted to crucify Jesus. Mm. They shall rejoice because it was their main goal to stop the work of Jesus by mm. that time. And then he goes on to say, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Mm. Which means that when he is resurrected, their sorrow shall be turned into joy. Because then that will really prove who Jesus is. At the cross, that is when he's dying for their sins. So that is when their lives will be transformed. That is when the world will actually change on that cross. Because Jesus has died for the sins of the whole world. But their joy, but their sorrow will be turned into joy. Mm. When they see Jesus back on the earth, when they see Jesus walking after his death on the earth, and that will prove who Jesus really is, and that the word, they were serving a king who is greater than any physical king that is ruling any big country mm -hmm. in that time. So, that's, so that is what we have to also look in this day and age. Because sometimes uh, we go through things. We go through a period where we are weeping and lamenting. And usually when we're going through sorrow, when we're going through trials and tribulations in our own lives, there are people that are rejoicing about it. There are people that are happy that, okay... Things are not going well for this woman. Things are not going well for this man. And know that there are people that are happy about it. But be encouraged because here Jesus is saying that your, your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Mm. So whatever problem that you're facing, whatever trial and tribulation that you're going through with the help of Jesus Christ, your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So don't look at your present circumstances. Look at the future and have hope, have faith that one day you will wake up again, you will walk again, you will rise above your enemies and the Lord's glory will be upon you. You have to remember that during your trials and during your tribulations, never curse God, mm -hmm. never, never curse God, mm -hmm. never forsake him, always pray to him. And it is important to even worship him during that time. Mm -hmm. That is the time the most that you have to worship the Lord Jesus during your trials and tribulations. So be encouraged, my brothers and sisters, that your sorrow will be turned into joy. Excellent. Uh, well said. 21. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of a child, she remembers no more the anguish. For joy that a man is born into the world. <laughs> this, this should have been a, a, a verse for a pregnant woman to explain. Because they, they, they know what, what they go through when they are... Jesus just right now just went into the delivery hall. And he took a parable, which is an earthly event, to really unleash a divine purpose. Now, what was he saying? He's saying that, he says, disciples, right now you are full of sorrow. Mm. You are full of pain. It's the same thing. It's just like a woman who is mm. going through her, 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 her travail. Mm. Travail means a time for her to deliver. Mm. When the, she's pushing and she's going through the pain, she is so much in pain. But 
at the moment she delivers her child and the baby is giving to her mm. and the baby is you know looking at her now she yeah. see a, a, a carbon copy of, 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 <laughs> of herself. herself now she will say it's a blessing. wow it's a blessing the more like when women they have their first child they're like oh honey I'm not going to do it again. No more children for me. I'm finished. No more pain. No more pain for me. Mm. And then after a time goes on, the baby is very cute. Mm. And wherever she goes, people are, wow, you have a cute baby. Mm. Oh, your baby is very cute. Can I take your baby for five minutes? Then now she started, oh, I wish I had two. So whilst people take one, I can have one. Can have, yeah. So all of a sudden now she's planning, honey, yeah. let's get another one. Mm. Boom. So it's just like that. Jesus is saying that right now you are going through pain mm. and you are in sorrow and now you wish the pain um, was never there. But it's, Jesus is saying that the outcome of the pain, outcome of this thing that you are going through, when others hear the testimony, mm. when, you look up, when you look back to this thing, you'll be encouraged and you will glorify God mm. because you're, nobody goes through trials and it doesn't birth a promotion. Mm. What you are going through, there is a promotion at the end. Amen. So go through it well. And learn everything that God mm. wants you to learn. You see, trials, mm. all these things come to us for us to learn something. When you miss the class, you have to repeat it. So if it's painful and you don't want to repeat it, it's better you go through well. Mm -hmm. It's better you do everything that God is saying so that you don't have to repeat the class. If not, you'll be repeating it over and over again. God bless you. Amen. Verse 22. Mm. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And ye now therefore have sorrow. Jesus is explaining again that now they have sorrow. Mm. They will go through a period of trial and tribulation, but I will see you again. That means I will reappear back into your lives. And even if Jesus, Jesus is not appearing to us physically now, he's saying that whenever we go through sorrow, whenever we go through trials and tribulations, he will appear into our lives. I will see you again and your heart shall rejoice. Mm. And through our trials and tribulations, we will feel inner peace. We will feel calmness. We will feel that, yes, things are not going well, but then still, I still have that peace about me because I know the God that I'm serving. I'm serving a living God, and he will show up in every situation that I'm going through, and no man can take away my happiness. That is why you see people who are, who are really, really depressed, who are really going through a lot. They run to the churches because in their depression, in their trial and tribulation, you see them worshiping God and they do not let any man take away their joy. And that is when the hand of the Lord shows up in their situation. Mm. So let me just encourage you that if you're sitting at home and you're depressed or you're going through things, run to the house of God. Run to the house of God where your brothers and your sisters are and where the spirit of the Lord is so that you can be touched. You can be touched and you can see the hand of God. It's a very powerful experience. When, when, when you are present in church, especially at church services, the Spirit of God is so strong that no matter what you are going through, you will be uplifted and you will never leave the place the same. Amen. Amen. Very good. 23 says that, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you you now jesus is saying that there's coming a day hmm. when he says that in the day what jesus is talking about he's talking about the rapture when we have we are restored back unto him so he said that when this thing happened when we get to heaven actually you wouldn't have a need he said you shall ask me nothing and in that day he shall ask me nothing so uh, a full point a uh, full stop over there but then, and then he jumped right there and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that from now, he's talking about now, now that you are on the earth, whatsoever you will ask in my name, the mm. Father will give it to you. So it is two different things that is happening here. The first sentence, he was talking about when we get to heaven. Mm. No need. No need, yes. When we get to heaven, we don't go there with this flesh. So you wouldn't even have to ask God for soap to bath. You wouldn't ask God for clothes. You wouldn't ask God for anything. 
because you'll be there just like the angels. You are going to be a spirit being. Spirit being has no need. They don't even need food. Hmm. So we will get to heaven as a spirit being. He said that Jesus said, in that day when we get there, because he was talking about where we'll be going, mm -hmm. we will have need of nothing. We will not, we will, we will not have to ask. You don't get to heaven and ask Jesus for something. <laughs> You're already there. Everything here is yours. But then he said, but for now, now where you are now, everything that you will ask in my name, Jesus Christ, the Father will give it to you. So what, which name are you asking things in? Which name? You know the name. Mm. Some of you are saying that you don't need the name Jesus Christ to ask anything. You are going directly to God. But that is wrong. So you need to know this, that the Lord is saying that you, you will ask in my name and it shall be given unto you. Amen. Amen. So I, I, I'm trusting God that whatsoever that is worrying you now, the problem that you are facing now, I ask in the name of Jesus that may you encounter the mighty hand of God mm. in your life for a change. That you will be delivered from the crutches of Satan and be free mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 24. Mm. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. So Jesus is saying from, from up to this time, you haven't asked anything in my name. Mm. And there was really no point in asking anything in my name because I was here with you. Mm. But from now on, ask in his name and ye shall receive whatever you are asking that is in the will of God, mm. that your joy may be filled. That means that when you, are, you, when you are in tune with Jesus, when you accept, yes, that he has died for your sins and he is the son of God and he has resurrected back up to the Father, and you ask anything in his name, which is in line with the will of God. Let us remember that it's not just anything we get up and we ask that we will receive. It has to be in line with the will of God. And that is why we have to hear from the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will direct our every move, that even our requests and our needs will be in line with what the Holy Spirit wishes for us. Mm. So that when we open our mouths and we ask Jesus, to grant us something or to do something for us. It will be in the will of God and then your prayers will be answered. Mm. So you have to really go back. If you've been experiencing situations where you are praying about something and the thing is not manifesting, you have to re-ask yourself, am I in the will of God? Is this really what God wants for me or is it what I want for myself? And let the Holy Spirit guide you. He will guide you in all truth. So he will show you the will of God for your life and the things that you need for your life that is within the will of God. Mm. Very good. 25 says that these things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. Now Jesus is mm. saying that I've been talking to you now in parables and in proverbs. And he's saying that I'm saying these things, so I'm generalizing the whole, the whole statement that it could be applicable, it could be applied to everything. But there's coming a time that I'm not going to speak to you in that direction again, but I'm going to show everything to you plainly. And that will take the hand of the Holy Ghost. So when the Spirit comes, Jesus will show us everything through the Holy Spirit plainly. And he's talking about the Father. Mm. The Spirit of God, which we call the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, um, or some call it the Holy Ghost, is a part of God. So God is Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship in Spirit and Truth. So it's a part of God that, God, that Spirit came out of God. Now Jesus said that God is a Spirit. And God is a spirit, yes, he's a spirit. But this spirit, this Holy Spirit or the spirit of truth is coming from God. And the Bible has classified this to be God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But then we have God the Father. And the spirit of God, which is the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, is yes, still coming from God the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming from God the Father. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing boils back to God. So he said that when this spirit comes in you, You'll be matured enough to see the mind of God. 
you'll be well equipped to know the mind of God or the heart desire of God or your purpose. The number one thing that I think is very, very important that you must know your purpose for being alive. Why have God kept you alive? Has God kept you alive to populate the world because the world needs human beings? Only? No. But there is a purpose and there is a, there is a mission connected to your life, to your destiny. There's something that only you and only you can do. And if you don't accomplish that, it will be like you've neglected and rejected your cross. So it is very imperative that you must carry your cross. You must know why you are alive. You must know what is your mission on this earth. I, I thank God that I, and I know my purpose and I know what I have to do. My, my reason of being on earth is to serve Jesus Christ and to serve him well. So God bless you. Mm. 26. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, 27. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and I have and, and have believed that I came out from God. So Jesus is saying that on that day, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to plead on your behalf to God the Father. Have you seen the connection over here? Mm. So now Jesus pleads on our behalf unto God the Father. But at that day, at that day which he's talking about is the return. We wouldn't have to. He wouldn't have to tell the Father, Father, oh, do you remember Apostle, Apostle Kobe Washington? Or do you remember um, Abna Washington? No, 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 no. Because they have loved me. So they've made it to heaven. So they are in heaven and God will receive you and God will move with you. So nobody has to introduce you to God or nobody has to plead on your behalf again. So, so Jesus was trying to say that for, for the Father himself love you. Now, remember that the Bible verse said that nobody can come to me, Jesus Christ, unless the Father draweth him. So, you know, it's not common to everybody to just wake up and say, I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ. God the Father must work something out in the person's life for the person to see following Jesus Christ to be important. So, it says that for the Father himself have loved you, because you love me and have believed that I came out of the Father. Mm. So this is your ticket. One way ticket to heaven. One way ticket to heaven is that one, God loves you. Two, you believe in Jesus. And then number three was, you have believed that Jesus Christ came out of God. So this is your ticket. So if you really believe, you obey what he says. Mm. If you really believe that he came out of God, you will take his words very precious. I mean, when you hear the word of God, how do you, how, do you cherish the word of God or we just kick the word of God to the side? So Jesus said that these are the things that will bring you to heaven. Like this week, we'll be handling uh, carry your cross mm -hmm. and, and obedience, obedience in the church. I believe so much that if we don't obey the instructions of God, you cannot receive. You cannot be impacted. You cannot be anointed. You cannot have the things. There are things that you are asking for, and God is ready to just give it to you, but because we are not obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than fasting. You cannot disobey God and say, let me use fasting to blind God so that God can give me what I want. No, you can fast, but if you don't obey God, you will not get anything. So following the word of God and obey obedience, that is what you need. You need the power to obey God. You need the grace to obey God. We all do need the grace to obey God because without obedience, we are not going to be able to make it in life. Amen. Verse 28, I came forth from the Father and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. So here he's plainly telling them, I have come from the Father into this world. And then I will leave this world and then go to the Father. So he's not speaking in parables anymore, but he's telling them exactly what is actually going to happen. This, these are the last and the final words that Jesus is talking with to his disciples before he actually goes for crucifixion. And that is why he keeps on stressing the point that he has come from the Father. Mm -hmm because it has been the doubt of so many of the Pharisees and the people who want to crucify him that he is not from the Father. But he just wants his own disciples to know that, yes, he 
he really did come from the Father and he will return back unto the Father. And that is why we as Christians, we know that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, so many different religions see him as just being another disciple or being another prophet, prophet or, or any other title they want to mm. give him, but they don't accept the facts that he's actually the Son of God. And here he's telling us and he's telling the disciples that this is who I am and it is God that sent me and it is God that I will return back with, back to in heaven and I will abide and I will dwell with God the Father in heaven. So for his disciples to know that when, when, when these questions come their way during the, their discipleship process mm. or during the time when they're out in the wilderness, they will know exactly how to stand for Jesus. Mm. And as the more as they confess Jesus also, mm. the more the power of the Lord comes upon them and protects them in that trial and during those tribulations. So it is very important for us now to always confess who Jesus is, that he is the Son of God. No matter what situation we are in with our friends or with our peers, let us always confess that, yes, Jesus is the Son of God. Do not be ashamed or do not think your friends won't accept it because whether they accept it or not, it is a fact. Mm. And know that the power of God is upon you anytime you, you confess it with your mouth. Amen. Amen. This is powerful. Take all these words very close to your heart. Now, 29 says that his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverbs. So the disciples are like, oh, thank God. Now, mm. now he's not speaking in parables <laughs> now we again. Understand. <laughs> now, whatever you're saying, Jesus, these last days you've been speaking very clearly. Thank you mm. for really speaking speaking clearly for us mm -hmm. to understand now you are making points like we are going to the father and then when you go to the father you've made everything very clear mm -hmm. we thank you jesus for doing that mm -hmm. and Teddy says that now we are sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee by this we believe that thou comest from god they are saying that now because you just spoke clearly he didn't speak in parables now we believe that you came from god now we believe. Now we're just thinking, it's just speaking clearly is what is going to help you people to mm -hmm. believe or, or, or just believing that he is the son of God. And he said that now we believe that you mm -hmm. came from God. And, and 31, let me finish with that word. And Jesus answered them, do ye now believe? So Jesus now asked them a question back again. That, so do you now believe? <laughs> After all this. <laughs> After all these three and a half years, now you believe me. <laughs> So this is, this, is, uh, this is awesome. They, and they said something that now we know you know mm. everything. And do, do you know that you should be very comfortable that God knows your future? Do you know that you should be very happy that God knows where you are going? Do you know that God knows how your day is going to end? Do you know that even God knows how you are going to depart from this earth? How you are going to leave this planet? What is going to take you out? Whether it be sickness or car accident? What, you know, God knows all this stuff. So there's nothing new under the sun. That's one thing you need to know. So that's why you need to trust him. And he has gone into your future. And he has seen your future. He prepared it for you. He was in your past. He's in your presence. And he's, he's finished every work. Mm -hmm. So that is why you need to trust his words. When he tells you to turn, turn. When he tells you to sit, sit. When he tells you to forgive, forgive. When he tells you to give, give. Whatever God says, mm -hmm. just do it. Amen. Do not waste more time. Mm. Verse 32, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. So here he's a bit speaking in parables, because he's talking about when the Pharisees and the soldiers are coming to take him for his crucifixion. And at that time, every disciple will mm. run away. Mm. They'll be scattered to their own homes, mm. to their own business, everybody leaving Jesus alone. Jesus, who they confess that they will die with him, they're ready to fight for him. But when the final time of judgment or the final time of trial came, mm. what happened? All of them run away. And he's telling them, he's prophesying, that ye shall be scattered, you shall run away, and I shall be left alone. No. And he's saying, but yet I am not alone mm. because the Father is with me. Mm. And the Father is with me because it is the Father who sent me here on earth for this. This is my main purpose 
for being here on earth at this point, about mm -hmm. to go to the cross. So even if no man is standing by my side, my father will always be, be with me, will yeah. always be by my side. And that is what we have to take from mm -hmm. this verse. That even if our family rejects us, even if our friends and our loved ones reject us, God, Jesus is always by our side, mm. always there to help us, to see us through the trial and tribulation. Wow, it's, this is so great. I don't know what you are going through that makes you think like God has left you, but I want you to know that God is by your side. Amen. I want you to know that the, the assignment that God has given you, which looks so big, mm. He's, he is the one who's going to provide everything that is needed. Sometimes when, when you get an assignment, an instruction from the Holy Spirit, which is being given by Jesus Christ to you, you stop, you know, worrying and you stop, you know, thinking, how is this, how can this be? But you have to know that the Spirit of the Lord shall come over you and it shall overshadow you and you will be able mm. to do what God has asked you to do. So I pray for you that may God empower you. Amen. 33 says that these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm. Jesus said, I, I've spoken these things to you. I'm telling you all this stuff that you will have comfort in me. You will have peace in me. You will stay grounded in me. Not that one tri trial comes, then you leave God, mm. and you leave me, Jesus, and you go and try and find a, a solution. And then when the problem is solved, and uh, sometimes you never come back until another problem comes back and where you have no other solutions, then you come back to the Lord. But the Lord said that he wants you to have peace in him. Peace in the Lord. Whereas you are in him, and no matter what that happens, you are in him. And he said that whenever a believer, a Christian, somebody who has been appointed as a child of God, who has been drawn to Jesus Christ, who have seen the goodness of the Lord, when the person denies he or her calling and go into the world, the only thing they can expect is problems. He says in the world you shall have tribulation. Tribulations means that you're going to have countless Problems will be coming to you. What people are doing out there and they can get away with, you do it and you'll be caught. You, 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 because you are a destined child to, into the Lord. There's somebody that must do God's work. You can't run away from it. So anytime you try, that's why there's a lot of people who are in the world, they are trying to succeed in the world and things are not going. And they know inside of them that I'm called to do my father's work. And they are wasting time. So Jesus said that, I have said these things to you that you will have peace in me. When you are following me, follow me. Follow me. Keep your eyes on me. Don't keep your eyes on the world. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Don't compete with anybody. See your case to be very different. Sometimes the greatest problem, and I think is, is the greatest problem in the world, the greatest problem in the world right now is the spirit of comparison. I need to get what he has. And I have to have the best of what he has. I want people to praise me. This is what is crushing the world down. But the Lord has set you free from that. Amen. You are unique by yourself. There's no copy of you anywhere. So remember this, that God has chosen you. Okay, we have to end our program here. I know you've been blessed. And I want to pray for you first before I wrap up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for the viewers. I pray that you should encounter God in your home right now. Through this set, I pray that may the heavens be open. May the power of the living God incubate you and bring you to a level where understanding will be made common, where wisdom will be your impartation. I pray this day that any evil spirit that has been battling you and been fighting you, that has been giving you all kinds of trouble, I pray this day that it should lose your hold. Amen. If you've run away from the love of God, I pray that may you return to your first love, mm. that you can encounter the glory of God. Your life will not go round in circles, but I pray this day you will move on. You will make heights, you will climb mountains, and you will go through valleys 
and you go through fire and water, but yet still you will see the hand of God over your life. Mm. I prophesy greatness and goodness over your life. Every sickness be lifted away. Mm -hmm. Every problem be blocked in the name of Jesus. Any accident that has been orchestrated against your life, I pray the Lord, may it backfire in the name of Jesus. Amen. That may the power of God be made relevant in your life. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to let my lovely wife in welcome you Amen. to church. Yes, we fellowship on Sundays at 12 o'clock, mm. on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. We have prayer and deliverance. This is a powerful, impactful service filled with the Holy Ghost. So if you need a breakthrough, if you need to go through any form of deliverance, this is the time that you should visit Action Chapel. We also have services on Saturday at 9 a.m. called Morning Glory where there is impactful word of God and worship, and also, most importantly, feet washing. As Jesus said, that when he leaves, we should wash one another's feet. And that is what we are doing during morning glory. So you have four opportunities to visit us during the week. Do not miss out. You don't have an excuse. Remember that. Mm -hmm. And when you're coming, don't come alone. Come with your friends, come with family, and you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. We love you. Goodbye. Wow. So amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a wonderful message. I believe this message has be benefited everyone. I believe you have been touched by the word of God. This message has not left, has not left me the same. It has been so wonderful. And I want to say that you will continue to be tuning into this program. And I want to believe that you, because you have been touched, because you have been, you have at least got a very nice message from this program. I want to believe that you will continue to listen to this program. But just in case you have been, uh, you have been blessed and you believe that you really need to be in, in touch with us, you can reach Action Chapel on Facebook. You can also send us an email or you can call us. We are found on Facebook and our Facebook page is Action Chapel Sweden. Check out for us on Facebook and we will be there for you. And we will be there to give you all the necessary information that you really need to get. We can also be found on the website and our page is Action Chapel Sweden. You will get us. You can also call us. I know we will be very glad to reply. We will be very glad to listen to you. The, the man of God, the apostle, who has just been to us, who has just been talking to us, will be there to pray for you, to listen to you, and to continue blessing your spirit. I believe we will hear from you soon. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please see you next time.